So, um, I have six new archival inks for this release, and they coordinate with the, the six from the first release. So I like a, the garden theme, flower theme, so I still stuck with my same names that, that kind of fit in with the whole thing. So I have carnation red, leaf green, dandelion, forget-me-not, tree branch, and hydrangea. Um, and I specifically chose these colors to work with the first six colors so that if you use cornflower from the first one, you can still use it with tree branch or you can mix it with the dandelion and they're all kind of interchangeable. There's really no combination that's going to look bad. And that was kind of what I had in my mind because I want you know people to use what they had before and just add to it. So the reason I like archival inks is because they're permanent ink when they're dry. So they're good for multiple surfaces. So if you're thinking, okay, like what is the best ink for this or what will work on this ink, on this surface, because ink, you know, not every ink works on every surface. Um, archival is pretty much the answer. So if you want to stamp on glass, if you want to stamp on plastic, if you're going to stamp on art parts or chipboard or cardstock or um, embossing paste, archival will work on all those surfaces. So that's, that's really why I like it too. So I kind of wanted to show you too, the labels are a little bit deceiving because these are prototype labels. So this label I don't think is really cool, but it's such a beautiful color. That's Forget Me Not. Um, the tree branch label too looks kind of boring and it's probably going to be one of the po most popular colors because it's such a neutral color. It just pretty much goes with everything um, the same way Water and Can did from the first release. So, <clears throat> a lot of things you can do with archival ink. Um, I use it for stamping, that was the first thing I did. Then I discovered I love it for stenciling. And then it's like, okay, everybody is doing art journaling and they want mixed media classes, so how am I gonna figure out something new to, to use the archival inks for? So, um, I always like to find a product, another way to use a product, because I think it kind of validates my purchase. If I can use it more than one way, I'm happy. So I started playing around, um, and I used my archival reinkers to make some backgrounds. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. And it's very simple if you use the right products. So first thing you need is Ranger Specialty Stamping Paper. This is like the best paper in the world. It's absolutely outstanding. Um, I tried the technique on um, just a plain manila tag, manila cardstock. The, the technique is so fluid that instantly the fluid soaks through the tag and it's just completely, you have, don't have any chance to manipulate the colors and it just soaks through the tag. So whatever this magical coating is on here is like the best in the world. Okay. So you want specialty stamping paper. You want like two colors of your archival reinkers. And I don't have my new one yet, so I'm going to show you from the first release. Um, and then if you like to add bling, and I do, I think it just kind of adds an extra layer to the background. I like Tim's metallic mixative. And again, this is very, very concentrated, so one drop is all you're going to need. Okay. And then the key ingredient is rubbing alcohol. So a dollar store, big bottle, is the best thing to do. Um, I tried it originally with um, the alcohol blending solution and it worked really well and it was really pretty. But what happened is the combination of the archival, the special stamping paper, and the um, alcohol blending solution, it kind of left it sticky on the surface. And I was afraid if you close your journal for a couple weeks, it might the pages might stick together. <clears throat> so I thought, okay, let's, what's plan B? And um, plan B is rubbing alcohol. And for store owners, it's actually better because it's cheaper. So save your blending solution for when you're using alcohol inks. Okay, so here's how this works. You want to put some alcohol down on your surface. And then you want to remember these are concentrated, so you only want one drop. Okay, so this is, I think I grabbed orange blossom here. So one drop of orange blossom. One drop of corn flour. And it doesn't matter if you put these in the alcohol or just on the side, it really doesn't matter. And then your metallic mixative, you want to make sure you shake it. That has that little metal mixing ball in it. And one drop of this again too, because this is very concentrated. This will cover one, that whole big page. Okay. Okay. Now I don't like that those colors are so concentrated, so what I like to do is either a craft stick or just your palette knife and just kind of mix those colors up a little bit and get them spread out and diluted. The one thing you need to know too is then when you start this technique, when you put your paper on and take it off, it's not very cute. But what happens is when the alcohol dries, it's really, that's how you get the really pretty layers. And I'll even add a little bit more on here to get some more blending going and drips. Okay. So now I'll just start drying this. And what you'll see is I can manipulate the color, oops, sorry Mark, <laughs> um, and just kind of move this around. 
And as the alcohol dissipates and dries, you get all these beautiful layers of color, and it's that easy. So if you think about this normal cardstock by now, it would have been bubbled and ruined. Perfect on the back. It's only sloppy there because I dropped it in there. But beautiful, beautiful background, that easy. And you can see the metallic mixative is in there. Really adds a lot. I think it adds a lot to the background. It's just an extra layer. So now what I want you to see is all that alcohol that sat down here, all that fluid, did nothing to the paper. It looks a little bit soft here. And if you don't touch it and play with it, if you just heat it, it will it kind of heals itself and it just goes back to a nice firm edge. So it's it's really it's it's amazing paper. I have never actually ruined a piece where like I saturated it. And I tried to, because I thought, at what point is this not going to work? It doesn't. So it's really good for art journal pages, because there's one page, and I have a clean page for the back to start. So it's not like it's soaked through. I have to work around a, a spot that's there. So I think beautiful background. If I wanted to pick up those dots, I could do that. If I wanted to pick that up with um, a paintbrush and just kind of spatter that on there, I could do that with a paintbrush. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Thank you. No, no, thanks. I would even add a little bit more to this. And if this was all dried up, like if I went to lunch, came back, and this was all dried up, just add a little bit of alcohol to it, and those colors are still usable. So I could just kind of even add more dots to this. And go ahead and give that a dry. And there's the start of the background. So for the people who are doing art journals, I think this is really good. It's an easy way. You know, you're looking at this big white space, but as soon as you get your background on, it's kind of like the page talks to you and tells you what, like I need something here, this needs something here. Just kind of, even if you don't have an idea when you start, if you have your background done, it just kind of like, it just takes over. Okay, so you guys can pass it around if you want to look at that better. Um, I try not to waste anything. So this little bit of ink, if I'm a store owner, I don't want to waste it. So if you have card makers, right? You can pick this up, add a little bit more. This is going to be paler because it doesn't have as much ink, but it's still going to be really pretty. And you'll see, even though it looks like there's not much on there, there really is, and when it dries, you're going to have all these layers, and you can manipulate it. And if you don't like drips, you can just let it flat and let it dry that way. Um, sometimes, if you hit it at the right time, you can take a paper towel high and um, you can dry it and you'll get the texture from the paper towel in there, which is really kind of cool too. So can you see how that background darkened? You know, with very little ink. And there's probably still enough on there for two more cards. So um, just kind of from a cost point too, when I started this, I thought oh, I'm gonna have to buy a whole lot of re-inkers. Um, not true. What I've discovered at home is I've probably done at least 50 pages, the, the large pages. And I've done a lot of smaller um, pages, pieces like this. Um, and then I also did some pieces that went in the trash, like when I tried it with the alcohol blending solution. Um, and I'm still on my first bottle of re-inker. So there's like a million drops in here. But so it's really, you know, at two, what is it, 350, I think? So at $1.75, it's, it's a good demo. And I could still use that if I wanted to, but get rid of that.